So there are four enzymes you need to know that bacteria can do. Okay, what is one of them? One of them we kind of already talked about when I was talking about antigenic variation. IgA protease. Okay, I glanced over it earlier, but what's IgA? Antibody, okay? Antibodies recognize antigens. Okay, so what's the purpose of an antibody? Does it attach and like eat the bacteria? Flags. It, it flags it. It's the red flag. Okay. So macrophages are kind of dumb. They're going around and they're just like, uh, I don't know. oh, eat, and they eat something. Okay. But in order to make something a macrophage really want to eat something, which think our immune system, if there's a bacteria, our immune system really wants the macrophage to eat that thing. Well, we, what do we do? We attach antibodies to it. It literally makes it look really tasty for the macrophage. It's called obstinization. We're going to learn that in the next test. And that literally translates into make tasty. Okay? <laughs> so we're trying to, it really does. We're trying to make it look tasty for the macrophage. Now, if you're a bacteria, do you want to look tasty to a macrophage? No. If I'm in the woods running away from murder, a murderer, do I want a big red flashing flag on my back? No. Okay, so what am I going to do to that flag? Yeah, I'm going to tear it off, rip it off. What do they want to do to the IgA antibody? Rip it off. So what do they secrete? IgA protease. Protease is an enzyme. Anything that ends in ACE is an enzyme, right? Protease is an enzyme that breaks up proteins. So if there's a bacteria that has an IgA antibody on its surface, it secretes the IgA protease and it chops up the antibody. Now the macrophage is going to have a lot harder time finding it. And that's good for the bacteria, bad for us. Is that okay? Again, not viruses. Viruses wish they could do that, but they can't. And to be honest, antibodies aren't very good for viruses because they're usually inside your cells, right? Okay, what's another enzyme? Kinase. Kinase. What does kinase do? Yeah. So think I'm walking down the street and I step on a nail, okay? And the nail has tetanus on it. Lucky day for me, okay? I step on the nail that has tetanus. What happens to your body? Why don't you just bleed out? Yeah, the blood clots. One, so you don't bleed out. Two, because if tetanus got in there, what's the highway system of your body? Blood. So tetanus gets in this wound and it sees all these open blood vessels and it's just like, sweet, and just hops around. But what happens if we block them off, if we form blood clots? It makes them stay there so that the macrophages can come and eat him, right? But what does kinase do? Breaks down blood clots. So that's really good for bacteria because they don't want to be confined and just wait for their death, right, of the macrophages coming to eat them. So they produce kinase so that they can break down the blood clots and get access to the bloodstream. Does that make sense? What's the opposite of kinase? And what does that mean? So coagulase forms blood clots. Why do you think that would be beneficial for a bacteria? Yeah, what did we say? It encloses it in an area. So some bacteria will produce coagulase, because where are all the white blood cells found? In your blood, okay? So if you don't want them to get to you, what do you do? You form roadblocks in the blood. So you're walling yourself off. So your blood clotting is good, right? Your body does it all the time every time you get cut. It's bad when the bacteria are doing it for their own benefit, okay? So kinase and coagulase, those are two enzymes that the bacteria could use when it comes to blood activities. Is that okay? Yeah. So like for, for cholera, it says the toxin is collagen, so is that... It's cholera what? Collagen? That's what it says. Is that the toxin? Yeah, that's what it says. Toxins are different than enzymes, though. Right, so, but, but then secreting the hyal... Hyaluronidase? Yeah, hyaluronidase. That's what structured coccus patogenesis does, but that's different than secreting a toxin. Yeah, enzymes and toxins are different. Well, yeah. 
Yeah, they're both secreting them, but they're different in structure. They kind of work as a team to carry out bacterial pathogenesis. That was kind of a lot of big words. Is that, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's the last one, hyaluronidase. Hyaluronidase, it's an enzyme. Notice how these all end in ACE. Anything that ends in ACE is an enzyme. Remember reverse transcriptase enzyme? What does hyaluronidase do? Yeah, so you guys have heard of flesh-eating bacteria. You have one on your disease presentations. What's a flesh-eating bacteria you need to know? Necrotizing fasciitis. Does the bacteria actually eat your flesh? No. What does it do? It produces hyaluronidase. What does hyaluronidase do? Yeah, so our cells, they have a glue between them. Okay? It's called the extracellular matrix, the ECM. And within that ECM, we have something called hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acid, so this is part of the extracellular matrix, it's the glue between your cells. What hyaluronidase does is it breaks up that hyaluronic acid, which is pretty much dissolving the glue between your cells. So what happens to your cells? They start falling off. So the reason we call it a flesh-eating bacteria is because it makes it look like it's eating your flesh, but it turns out it's just making your skin fall off. Does that make sense? So you better know necrotizing fasciitis produces hyaluronidase, okay? That's something that's characteristic of most flesh-eating bacteria. Do all flesh-eating, do all bacteria produce hyaluronidase? No, and thank goodness they don't.